all right what's going on everybody jumping in this one real quick because holy crap all right so if you <laughs> tried to watch the video yesterday you may have noticed that there was no freaking microphone volume and looking at this one uh this one was a combination of microsoft and obs dude i swear for whatever reason windows just decides to like jack up microphone drivers and settings every once in a while for whatever reason i do not know but i don't know I usually just put the computer to sleep, restarted it the other day, started it back up. And the, weird, the crazy thing is, like, I could see it when I'm recording right here on the little volume level bar. I could see it moving while I was recording, but who the hell knows what's up. So, you know, for those of you who actually watched it and maybe watch it beyond just like two minutes, if you actually got the gist of what I was talking about, because granted, I tend to be fairly expressive with the mouse think like the mouse cursor at what i'm looking at if you got what i was going for god bless you T tell me in the comments i'm curious to see uh, did you pick up what i was trying to say yesterday if you did if anybody gets it like close because i really only specifically talked about like a couple big things if you if you can get what those were i'll give you a price i will send you some crypto not sure what kind yet or how much i mean it's not going to be anything like super crazy but i will send you some and uh it'll be enough that the gas fees don't wipe it out for whatever it is but i'm curious to see what anybody comes up with so looking at it right now just a little bit of a recap eh, you know things did change a little bit you know that was you know we were over here at the time we did see a little bit of a pump to the upside i think like right after that video but even in the video i was talking about how it was looking for things to start heading down a little more you know we were ranging over here in between uh these support and resistance lines tightened up that range a little bit throughout you know last night and then uh this morning and then we started taking a little bit of a dump earlier and yeah, see now if I say what I'm gonna say that kind of gives away what I was talking about with the price, but Well, fuck it. It's more important to be looking at the chart here So what I was talking about partially was that I was expecting a Run back down to this golden pocket if you don't remember or didn't see what that is all about Let's zoom out a little bit here the Golden pocket is the big one for the entire bull market which we uh you know came down to closed above like weekly whole nine yards we closed above it never you know closed below the golden pocket but you know we've been bouncing off a couple times and i was like okay the first thing i was waiting to see that if it was going to happen today which it did was we at least came down to the top of the golden pocket now at this point you know i'm looking for that higher low and the way it looks right now we might not see it go too much further but even since earlier today you know we're seeing these rsis come super tight together and this is up here on the four hour we are potentially you know seeing money flow and momentum start trending up it's a little bit early on the momentum but if you come over to you know the one hour we do have a potential for a bullish divergence we already have a bullish divergence going on on the vwap or i should say had you know we just just now in the last like hour or two might take a bounce off the zero line and if we come down from there that's a pretty bearish sign you know money flow is still basically kind of going to the downside so we'll see what happens there you know rsi is tight together still pointed down but fairly close to the bottom i swear if this audio doesn't work i'm gonna fucking flip but yes you know, so at the moment last time i looked at the chart really we were like over here and starting to come back up but now that we've came back down to it it's making me feel maybe a little bit potentially bearish i'm not going to say bearish just yet but you know the fact that we're coming down and retesting 
that level shows uh so, so shows some push to the downside right there that there's a little bit more bearishness going on again this is the one hour you know we started coming back up off of this one now kind of heading down a little bit and we did hit a lower low but so far at the moment again oh that was that was terrible we could potentially see a bullish divergence right here now the fact that it, it could be too early uh, just heads up on this it could be too early but we really didn't see the bullish divergence on the VWAP play out super great we had this little one right here which we did get a little pullback to the upside again keep in mind money flow is coming down so that's all we were i was expecting to see out of that one um did continue trending on the vwap to the upside so if it plays out like it often does you know if this money flow doesn't go any lower i'd expect to see some kind of reversal here in the uh you know short to midterm time if it continues that way you know, we could get close and hit a bottom on this RSI. So, I'm definitely more bullish than I was yesterday, but that that's kind of the short-term view. So, if we jump back up, you know, come back up here to the daily. Actually, let's zoom out. Let's get a, a little wider view here. So it is almost almost time to start putting in a new spider line on here. Might be a little bit hard to see depending what you're watching on. But we've got you know one spider line here, another spider line there. Currently hovering right at the top of that golden pocket. So we're, we're, we're in the zone right now. You know, we were consolidating quite a bit yesterday and monday over here daily chart money flow is still going down so not looking super great despite the fact that you know mo momentum is coming back up and unless this money flow like immediately turns around that's super bearish because vwap also heading back down probably within the next day or so potentially cross the zero line if we don't get a bounce did kind of have this little little uptrend right here going on on the VWAP you know a little bit of bullish divergence right there that really hasn't I say it hasn't played out but I guess technically you could say that this pullback right there might have been the play out the more that I look at it yeah that's probably the case you know, RSI is fairly tight. So whatever it's doing, it's, you know, it's actually moving. It's not just crab walking sideways. Uh, coming back down to a shorter time. Yeah, look at that. Getting a little yellow X, 20 on the bear side. Looks like getting pretty close to that exact level once again. You know, figure one touch, two, three. Intervals getting shorter together. We don't bounce off. May not be looking so hot. Yeah. Again, money flow coming down, but we got this. Now, you know, prior when I was looking at this earlier. You know, we were seeing this action, and I'm like, okay, that, that, that's gravy. That's a bullish divergence right there. Like, but we got invalidated. So it's uh, it's up in the air at the moment. Oh, that's actually got some video too, huh? Damn, that looks fun. Uh, let's see. ETH looking the same. Oh, looking worse. Look at that. Nine percent. 
Now, something to notice over here on Ethereum is we already hit a lower low right there. Yeah, compared to right there. So, I mean, if we were to turn around right now, yeah, we'd have a little bit of... Yeah, these things just snap to weird directions sometimes, but if it turned around like right now, we would have a little bit of bullish divergence, but same as Bitcoin money flow still, still going down, but we're starting to get fairly low. I mean, we could be reaching, you know, a bottom right now, especially if mo momentum continues to trend up there along with it. <laughs> That's a little rough looking actually. So, you know, we were getting bigger and bigger split as we came down. But then once we had that little pullback right here, now the next leg going down, they're starting to pull in closer together. So that is not a great sign right there. Still at a 12. I mean, it's less than the 17, but you can get sustainment anywhere between like 9 and 12 if you keep getting red candles or green candles if you're going the other way. Let's... Let's zoom it out a little bit. So, you know, looking over here on the weekly, you know, still not super great. Heikinashi, so it's still red, but, you know, we, we bounced back a little bit from the big dip. Now we're just kind of teetering on the edge of whether we're going to push below or not. You know, potentially this could be a pattern that we had here, you know, between the blue and the yellow right there. The orange, if you don't know, if you didn't see it before, goes all the way back to the previous bull market all time high. So it's not necessarily an immediate pattern as much as it's a trend line, just all on its lonesome. This guy right here is not really doing anything. I mean, you could almost call this a channel between the two. But 16 on the DBSI. Again, much less than 26, but certainly bearish still. Momentum starting to clip a little bit. You can see the difference in the angle right here from... I. I can't really draw the curve with this one, but you can see what I'm talking about where we're curving down here and now we're starting to turn in a little bit. Although money flow still going down pretty steady. You know, VWAP kind of pointed up again, had the, the bounce off the bottom there, but still below RSI's, still getting closer together, turning sideways a little. That's not bad. What do you guys think of the music? I'm just kind of randomly browsing some of these no copyright. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Mixes, compilations. Something interesting, something different. Look at that. We got a little and a big green dot on the three day. RSI is continuing to get closer together. Rolling up a little bit on the money flow, but still pretty low we did cross over on the VWAP just to reiterate you know if you don't know the little green dots and the little red dots coincide with VWAP crossovers if you don't know what that means plenty of videos on the channel go back and watch just search for VWAP on the I don't know if you could search on a specific channel I don't have a ton of videos so you could scroll back and find it but plenty of them talking about VWAPs and all the basics of market cipher down here if you're not familiar with market cipher we got a, a what is market cipher video go figure and 
kind of break it all down for you why i like it why i use it why some other people use it why i like it better than other indicators and uh if you're familiar with any of the imitators or attempted imitators in some cases then uh we got plenty of videos comparing them to other things too just to see how it works out with like calling out divergences and predicting uh reversals and things like that so you could see you know how it actually works in uh like a back testing <sighs> that and i like to think i made it somewhat interesting if you don't know those are those indicator fight club videos i had a fun time making them so if, if nothing else i quite enjoyed myself we got six hour yeah so you're getting multiple 12s that's kind of a sustainment number that it just tends to kind of keep going a little bit you know momentum still looking down money flow just staying in the red at this point rsi is a little split not getting bigger kind of looking sideways at the moment nah vwap not telling us too much now this part's interesting so look up here so if we go from the six hour i'm just gonna zoom this all the way so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better so you see the vwap right here how you know we're below zero but we're starting to come back up a little bit now go to the four hour you can see all right you know we're coming up a little bit more still below zero three hour now you can see this little curvature as it's you know curving out sideways where it starts heading like that that also is a sign of sustainment so in this case since we're below zero you know getting red candles tends to be bearish going down and then on the higher time frames as you're heading back up you know you can get some bounce back on the price for say the price is going like this and then you get a little something like that and then by the time you finally cross zero you're kind of up up and away but in a case like this where it's curving out and starting to go sideways I mean, you can kind of see up here where it never really did get that full enough bounce back to the upside to even get a green candle and it will kind of the price will kind of continue down until this guy finally crosses over it'll kind of flatten out a little bit and then maybe head up so if this does kind of continue sideways or even take another bounce off to the downside uh, we're probably going to see it go to the bottom of that golden pocket up here again if it continues to do that you know jump down a time frame you can see what it did over here on the two hour you know we were kind of coming up technically it did cross over but basically that's a bounce came back down approaching again but a lot of sideways you know a lot of bearishness <coughs> yeah money flow still in the red not super deep but you know keeping it going over here the one hour still getting lower on the money flow again similar situation vwap came up got rejected going sideways still not crossing up into the green yet which given you know this little uptrend that we had in the vwap right there that could be kind of dangerous that, that could end the uptrend before we really get a good reversal yet especially if this you know breaks below so i'd say over the next what is it 9 30 i'd say at least over the next hour or two i'm curious to see what happens with this keep in mind i mean you know this is a candle and this is a candle so this entire line segment is you know constantly moving right now depending on what's going on you know with bitcoin so even though this is looking sideways right now what do we have 29 minutes left i mean this thing could end up going up and crossing over before this candle's done so things to keep an eye out for 
you know, in case you're unfamiliar with that. Uh, shrink this guy back down a little bit. So that's really what's going on at the moment. Again, kind of at a, you know, a big support resistance level, critical point. We shall see if it can hold. Let's see, what do we got? I see some bigger negative numbers over here. Yeah, some altcoins taking some bigger dips. Ripple looking rough. Litecoin looking rough. Classic looking rough. ETH still, oh yeah, ETH's looking rougher. Honestly, Bitcoin's kind of holding its own better than anybody else right now. The altcoins look like they're ready to take a dump. Dumping. Dumping. A little bit of bounce back on Rune. Shib dumping. Doge dumping. Yeah. Generally about the same for everybody. Oops, not that one. Ooh, Zcash, decently big dump. Monero having trouble. What about? Yeah, Binance looking a lot like Bitcoin. That's interesting. Pancake holding its own. I mean, still putting in, you know, lower lows over here, but looking a little bit more like Bitcoin holding its own. I, I've been seeing Pancake Swap staying on the trending list over there on Coin Market Cap for shit days now. So I don't know what's up with that. Why everybody's getting in on Pancake, but everybody, oh, Anchor holding its own a little bit. Look at this. Anchor didn't even put in a new low yet. So that's interesting. Especially with all the stuff going on with Luna and everything, but we're not seeing any divergence just yet. So it could just be a little late to the party does have a 17 on the bottom of the dbsi you know kind of flatlining on the rsi right here flatlining on the money flow a little bit of uptrend in the vwap yeah green dot down here could potentially see it pull back up a little if it can break out of that range right there could be a little something to it I don't know. I don't necessarily trade Anchor. I, you know, right when I kind of learned about it and was wanting to trade it a little bit, everything started going to shit. So that was kind of, you know, out the window. But that's where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Tell you what, one more thing. Since it looked like we potentially had a little pattern here, even though it's kind of this half-ass slack ass pattern just out of curiosity if we were to put a target on it oh look at that i'll be honest with you i did not plan this ahead of time that's actually the first time i've checked a target off of that if it is indeed a pattern and frankly that's kind of amazing i mean that is dead nuts right on the bottom of the pocket now keep in mind spider line coming through here so if it does break through you know, potential that we pull short before coming back down. Man, that is interesting. Huh. Go figure. I mean, you could also almost call it like this. And if you wanted to be a, a dick about it and go for the wicks. See, that doesn't really fly. That doesn't really fly. I don't know. That one's garbage. I shan't take part in that. Honestly, this one makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, if I were going to call it, I'd say that one's probably the closest to something resembling a real pattern. But... Regardless, Golden Pocket, it's been super, super, super strong. 
threw out you know after the roll over top of the the bull market so i'm keeping it there i'm sticking with it oh we'll leave on this note here got our little gan square let's see what happened well would you look at that let's let's zoom in a little more here so if you do recall if you watched yesterday's video without the audio at least you had some good music i mean come on huh? Hmm. i gave you that at least shit quit complaining but if you remember seeing that brought up the gan square looky looky what we got here once again you know we got resistance on the fan line right there as well as i mean this is like a gigantic convergence point and where were we originally when i made a video back around this area i was talking about an intersection convergence point right there and as you can see i mean we just ran literally right through it i mean the candle crosses right there dead on the x x marks the spot you know i like my pirate shit but then found resistance up here started pushing down through found support right there where it might be a little hard to see but there's actually two lines pretty much overlapping right at that same level right there which is kind of interesting but came back up hit a reversal when we got to the outer ring started coming back down support all around this little convergence area so now that we are moving away from it you know we may hit another stopping point right here if we do continue to come down although i feel like we'll probably be like eh, like that and then we're kind of in open territory so that should be interesting but it continues to play out if you're uh, not familiar with the GAN squares or haven't. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you didn't hear me yesterday. So anyways, go back. I got a GAN square video, and I'd probably just reiterate that I am not claiming to be a fucking GAN square expert. I, you know, have not stuck my head up a dude's, like, GAN's butt and studied everything he ever did and read everything he ever wrote or anything like that. Basically, in that video, it's just after playing around with it a little bit, I just, I found a way that that works i mean it works for me i'm not going to say it's going to work for you whatever you got you know do your own thing i have noticed that depending on the the time frames you're on you may have to like adjust a little bit but just as a recap as a starting point you know right here this intersection is your your one by one because if you were to break this up into squares think of it as like ratios you got you know your one by one square your two by one you know two by two but i was lining up this you know one by one intersection right there i was trying to hit the low point over here and things just they weren't quite lining up but when you're doing it like i'm on the 30 minute time frame right now if you're doing it on lower time frames it's you're gonna have a little bit of fudge factor going on right there so i bumped it over to the left a little bit and it tended to like just bring everything into alignment like you start seeing reversals at certain points you know you'll see the the price just kind of like riding up along some of these uh arcs and trend lines and things like that you know you'll start seeing the fan lines form little trend lines going off in that direction so play around with it a little bit you know and i wouldn't just randomly drop it in and try to make it fit what you want but keep in mind you know so for the bottom corner i am gonna pick the swing low of a trend i mean that's a given you know hold the control key snap it to the bottom of the wick or if you don't like doing wicks um whatever that's your weird ass thing then uh <laughs> sorry and then at that point you know i try to drag it out so that you know we're coming out beyond the current candles and so you're gonna be dragging this corner up here so that way, you know, it leaves some empty space for you to like see, all right, where are we going? What do we have to look forward to? Because frankly, I mean, why would you give a shit where on a GAN square that the existing candles fall in other than to set it up for the unused candles? Because, I mean, where it was is where it was. You know, I mean, there's nothing you can do with it now. 
but that is what we are looking at right there so i hope this was informative or entertaining or if nothing else you know maybe your dog kind of looked up like huh i hear him but i hope everybody has a fantastic evening and damn i went out for 30 minutes i don't even know how the hell that happened all right i'm gonna go watch a movie because i have not watched it in a while remember Continue being a badass and life's too short. Live it up. Enjoy every day. Don't go too overboard, but I mean, smile. You know, the whole world might be going to shit and uh, just enjoy the ride. You know, if you can't smile and laugh while the world burns around you, then uh, well, life sucks then, doesn't it? So don't let it suck. Oh, also, you know what I had mentioned at the end of the damn yeah. So at the end of yesterday's video, if if you only want to see the chart stuff, whatever, you can switch off now at this point. But at the end of yesterday's video, I brought up this. I put the link in the description as well. And I was talking about I already got rid of the tab, but uh, was the address given by the the new Sri Lankan uh, prime minister? and what he was talking about basically like the scariest <clears throat> address by a president or prime minister you could ever expect to get if you're living in that country basically said that like the next two to three months are going to be like the worst anyone in that country has ever experienced and so things are absolutely looking apocalyptic over there seeing all kind of craziness over here as well between gas prices being freaking ridiculous and then baby food regular food shortages i mean industrial supplies i'm still seeing it at work like crazy having to deal with that problem even today um so yeah things are a little bit nuts so just remember keep yourself a uh, a store of food that's gonna last you a while you know get some non-perishables or you can get some regular storable food <clears throat> um because as as things get worse if they get worse believe me that stuff's gonna get harder to find the prices are gonna go up and you know with something like that worst case scenario what you eat it so i mean it's not like it's going to waste and remember if you're gonna stock stuff up in your pantry your cabinets or whatever your fridge you know make sure to get things that you actually eat otherwise it's just gonna sit in there till it expires and then it's gonna sit in there some more and eventually you're gonna throw it out because you know everything blows over and life is peachy and it goes on like normal you know, you at least want to have stuff that you want to eat. And God forbid things do go to shit and hit the fan. Then, uh, you know, what you're eating is going to be like the biggest point of morale at that point. You know, if you're just eating beans and rice every single day, you're going to go absolutely ape. And life is not going to be terribly enjoyable. Because keep in mind, it's not like you're going to be able to go to the bar at that point. Because, uh... All them people are going to be struggling to feed themselves and their family. Nobody wants to work at a bar where people don't have money to spend on things like, you know, quadruple price drinks. But all right. And, you know, last little tip here, since I got it open, just showing you this, guys. They have this little chart here. What happens after the first Fed rate hike? I brought this up in the video yesterday, but since you couldn't hear me, it just goes back and talks about how the S&P 500 reacted after the previous times that the Fed raised rates going back to 1983 here. You know, three months after, six months after, 12 months after. Kind of interesting. I also have a bit of an argument myself where I... I don't know. I'm kind of saying that it's a little bit different this time. You know, maybe if you were to go back to like the 1970, 71 area or even, uh, you know, depression times. But I don't know what was going on too much back then, obviously. But I'd say there's probably a little bit different going on this time. And these aren't going to be a precise predictor of what things would look like. Because keep in mind, just every, every, so much is happening all around the world. We're lucky. We're not seeing nearly the worst of it. So as much as it seems like things are kind of getting shitty over here or in the West, depending on what country you're watching from, it can definitely get worse. And in, in many places, it absolutely is worse. So, you know, be grateful for what you got. You know, stay vigilant, prepare a little bit, keep your head up and uh, try to be self-reliant. You never want to have to come with your hat in hand begging big daddy government to save you 
that's all all right i'm gonna stop preaching i will see you guys next time remember be good oh what do we got here hey we're getting a little bit of green candle all right looks like that bullish divergence might finally be doing a little something I guess if you hung in hung in there in the video, look at that. There you go. So, you know, we're getting lower lows. Had a little bit of bullish divergence on the momentum wave. You know, money flow's been coming up, especially down on like smaller time frames, but we just weren't seeing Jack representing that. But look at that, kind of interesting. Getting a big candle. So, you know, if we can run away from this golden pocket, I'll be happy. That's that's what I want to see. But you know, those higher time frames are looking a little bit rough. So, you know, Bitcoin putting in a higher low is kind of nice. What's he doing? Okay, even though we put in a lower low, looks like overall market's kind of going to push it in that direction. And that kind of confirms a little bit of a bullish divergence down here on the 8. That potentially confirms it over here on like 15... Yeah, 24-ish a little bit. Money flow is still kind of coming down. So keep your head up. You know, if you're trying to jump on along right there, 22 on DBSI. Just a heads up. Those can kind of burn out. If that's what you're going for, again, keep your head up. Be careful. You know, it may be the beginning of an uptrend in reversal, but... You know, nothing set in stone until you really see it going. All right, later.